As a PeopleSoft developer, do you need to learn JavaScript? Well, the short answer is no. The PeopleTools team wrote JavaScript so we don't have to. PeopleCode functions abstract away JavaScript so you and I can focus on business logic. So let me ask that question slightly differently. As a PeopleSoft developer, should we learn JavaScript? Absolutely. Yes, you should learn JavaScript. No, you don't have to learn it. But yes, you should learn it. Okay, but why? Why learn JavaScript if it isn't required? First, PeopleSoft delivers the user interface through a web browser. The web browser is the PeopleSoft rendering engine. Web browsers render HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and images. Now notice, I didn't say people code, pages, components, or records, but HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and images. The PeopleSoft rendering layer doesn't use a single PeopleTools technology, but every click, every tap, every keystroke runs through client-side JavaScript. Each time you save, PeopleSoft invokes JavaScript. With each page change, PeopleSoft invokes JavaScript. Now, the idea of PeopleTools is that we build solutions at the PeopleTools layer, and PeopleTools acts as an abstraction over the rendering layer. So as times change, PeopleSoft can rewrite the rendering layer without impacting our code. This abstraction facilitated the shift from client-server to the pure internet architecture, and it is this abstraction that will usher in the next user interface shift. Chatbots, anyone? <laughs> so reason number one to learn JavaScript is because JavaScript powers the rendering layer. If you want to transform the rendering layer, you must learn JavaScript. Okay, the second reason to learn JavaScript is that JavaScript is everywhere. You know, Sun's Java slogan was, write once, run anywhere. And that's true. But you don't find Java everywhere. It's kind of funny. JavaScript was just a glue language Netscape used to tie HTML to Java applets. It only had one purpose, interface between HTML and Java. And look at it today. Not only is it write once, run anywhere, it's also found everywhere. In fact, many of Oracle's cloud services use server-side JavaScript. Okay, so there's a little confusion between Java and JavaScript, and rightly so, as their names are similar. But here's the thing. They're totally unrelated. I know, crazy, isn't it? The only thing they have in common is their name. In fact, JavaScript wasn't even named JavaScript in the beginning. Six months after creation, Netscape struck a licensing deal with Sun to license the Java name. At least that's what I read on the internet. <laughs> now, we don't know why exactly, but the rumor is that it was about marketing, leveraging the Java brand. Anyway, that's lesson number one. Java and JavaScript are totally different, totally unrelated. And that is, by the way, a very important distinction. So again, why learn JavaScript? Reason one, because it's the PeopleSoft user interface language. And reason two, because it's everywhere. In fact, our blog includes several posts showing how to run JavaScript in the PeopleSoft application server. Yes, server-side JavaScript, which is far more powerful than client-side JavaScript. Okay, so with that, Let's write a couple lines of JavaScript. Now, I absolutely love browser developer tools. So let's open a browser console. I like the heat combination, control shift I, and let's write a few lines of JavaScript. How about, let's declare a variable. How about var greeting equals hello world. That's great. So I've declared a variable. I see there is no return value from that. So that's why I get the response back of undefined. And oh, whoops. <laughs> Just realized, I forgot to put a semicolon at the end. But did you notice it works anyway? JavaScript is a very forgiving language with lots of implicit assistance. But implicit rules are subject to context and confusion. So we encourage explicit declarations like this, putting a semicolon at the end. Anyway, we have a variable now named greeting. Let's go ahead and print it to the console. And I hit the enter key, and sure enough, it prints it out. Let's try using that variable with a function. How about the alert function? I'm going to put a semicolon at the end and hit the enter key, and 
there's a message popped up on the screen there using a JavaScript function. Now there are a ton of built-in functions and we can list them here in the console by first typing in window and then the dot. And we see a list of functions here. How about date? So we can invoke the date function, but you know, window is implicit. It's the top level global object. So we don't need to specify window dot. We can just specify date and then the JavaScript console will print out the current date. Speaking of functions, let's write our own function. How about, let's see, function say hello. No parameters, so empty parentheses. Start our function with a curly brace. How about alert hello world with no semi, with, with no exclamation this time so that it's different. And we'll end our function. Okay, ready, I'm going to hit the enter key. If I've typed everything correctly, we'll just see an undefined return value. If I typed anything wrong, we're going to see a red error message. Let's see here. Okay, perfect, undefined, so I typed it correctly. Let's invoke the function, say hello. And there it is. Now, interesting though, I want you to see something. Window, window dot say Look at that. The function we declared is actually a member of the global object window dot. Anyway, you notice the curly braces? That's about the only similarity between Java and JavaScript. They both use curly braces. Okay, let's define an object now. How about, let's, well, let's create an employee. Our employee equals curly brace, start our object with a curly brace, and let's give our employee some attributes. How about ID? of KU0007, and how about a name? Betty Lockerty. And how about, how about a department? How about 4,000? And of course, department here is a number, so I could leave it as a bare number, but as we know, department IDs in PeopleSoft are really text, so, I'll quote them and close my object with the curly braces and the end result we see undefined because we just declared a variable, but we can print that to the console. We can inspect it. How about let's use it? How about let's say hello? Hello employee dot name. And perfect, hello, Betty Lockerty. And with that last statement, we see an example of string concatenation. Huh, you know, it looks like JavaScript is pretty similar to people code. I mean, conceptually, they have functions, they have objects, we have variables and concatenation. We use the plus here for concatenation rather than a pipe. We have coded string literals and unquoted numbers. It seems the only difference is the operators and the curly braces. That's not too hard. Oh. But what about row set, record, SQL exec? Now that's a huge difference. Client-side JavaScript can only interact with page contents. If it's in the HTML, it's available. So no, we won't be accessing the PeopleSoft database from JavaScript. Oh, wait, or can we? <laughs> that's a great question. Let's save that for another episode. Anyway, in the next episode, I wanna show you how we might incorporate JavaScript into the PeopleSoft Fluid experience. Until then, I highly encourage you to check out some of the JavaScript tutorials included in this video's description. Now at JSM Pros, we teach PeopleTools concepts every week. Be sure to check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea, subscribe to our LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or do you have a team that wants to learn more? Give us a call, let's get something scheduled. Now before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future soundbite? Let us know by sharing your idea at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.